so excited that you're here. Today's topic, I think, is going to blow your mind. As you know, we always talk about the gut and inflammation and how inflammation affects everything. But we didn't talk about how much the gut affects your mental health. I'm talking it affects your anxiety, it affects your depression, it affects your mood. Your gut actually affects your mental health. And some of it might seem like um, you know, counterintuitive, but think about it this way. You know that when you're nervous, you get this feeling in your belly, they call it butterflies in your stomach. Some of you might even have like more intense GI symptoms when you're nervous. That's your brain talking to your gut, right? That's your brain saying, hey, we're nervous. We have a test coming. We have a job interview coming and you're feeling it in your belly. Did you ever question why that is? Why is your belly getting messed up if the anxiety is here? Could it be that they're connected? Yeah, they're connected. We're going to talk about that. And guess what? The belly also sends information back to the brain. It's called a gut-brain axis, and it's bi-directional. They talk to each other. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the gut-brain connection and how the gut affects your mental health. Let's talk about why the gut health, why gut health affects your mental health. I, I love this topic. I can't even tell you how much I love this topic. So the, the gut brain axis, there's a connection between your gut and your brain. This is a term I didn't invent it. It's called the gut brain axis. Look it up. It's, it's a connection. So the first part is an actual physical connection. There's a nerve connection between your brain and your gut. Let's talk about nerves for a second. So let's just take this finger and I'm moving it. That's your brain innervating a nerve, telling your finger to move. And on the same way, there's a conversation back, which is I touch something hot, I touch something painful, my brain gets that information, right, and pulls back. That's a conversation from your brain to your finger running through nerves. They're connected, pretty obvious. So there's one nerve, I mean, there's many nerves, but there's one particular nerve I want to bring your attention to called the vagus nerve. It is literally connected from your brain, passes near your heart, and connects to your gut. It is a pipeline from your gut to your brain. So before I even tell you the rest of what I have to tell you, which I think is going to blow your mind, right there, connected. So when someone tells you, oh, it's up here, right? your anxiety, your depression, it's all here. Hello, it's also here. It's connected. So this gut-brain access is physically connected to your vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve has a lot of other important jobs besides that connection. It's a huge, it's the longest cranial nerve. And let me just tell you, it's in, in charge of breathing, blood pressure, circulation, digestion, gut health, bladder movement. And in the brain, it's connected to the part that's in charge of creativity and higher decision making. So we're connected to creativity and higher decision making. And then down here, we're connected to gut, heart rate, circulation. It's a lot of things connected. You start to see how if I'm anxious here, and now we're talking about increased heart rate, right? Increased circulation, increased blood pressure, because that nerve is having that communication. Something's making me nervous. My heart rate's gonna go up. My breathing response is gonna go up because of that connection. So we have this bi-directional connection. Um, and it's also in charge of our fight flight response. So if we're stressed, heart rate going up, that's your vagus nerve. Now on the other side, when you take a deep breath, right? Meditation, yoga, and you take a deep breath, what happens when you take a deep breath? You feel better. You feel relaxed. Why? Because you just calm down your vagus nerve and it sends a message to your heart to calm down, slow down. It sends a message to your brain that things are calm. So this breath that you're taking down here is signaling back. So that connection between the gut and the brain is truly physical. But now we're going to talk a little bit more than just the brain. I'm sorry, than the vagus nerve. Before I do that, I need to let you know the vagus nerve, of course, like anything else, is affected by stress, smoking, alcohol, lack of exercise, poor diet, sleep, right? You have to take care of this nerve just like you take care of everything else. So when the vagus nerve is not healthy, it's agitated, it's gonna tell the brain to be agitated. And when the vagus nerve is calm and relaxed, 
it's going to tell the brain to relax. In fact, there are doctors now that are using vagus nerve stimulation as part of their treatment of depression because they know that if they can stimulate the vagus nerve, they can stimulate the brain and help with depression. But an easier way to calm down your vagus nerve is the deep breath, laughing, singing, splashing cold water on your face, exercising, and a good diet. So there's natural ways that you can calm or, or stimulate your vagus nerve without having to go to a doctor for a vagus nerve stimulator. But the point is, it exists because it is a known treatment for depression. So another way that the gut and the brain talk to each other is through the microbiome. And if you have not been watching all my lives until now, first of all, shame on you, go watch them like right now and then come back to this one because I talk about the microbiome a lot, but I still give you the cliff notes version because nice. So inside your belly, there's billions and trillions of a lot of other objects in there, bacteria, fungi, viruses, protozoa, they all live inside of you. There's trillions of them. There's actually more of them than there is of you at any given point. You're just hosting them, but there's more of them. And they do a lot of things. They don't just live there. They live there and they produce things. They produce certain chemicals. Some are good and some are bad. But what they produce has an effect on our entire system. What they produce actually affects our nervous system, our endocrine system, and our immune system. Let's talk about that a little bit more. So we talked about leaky gut. And if you haven't watched that, run, run, leaky gut. It's on. Make sure you watch it. So leaky gut, quick recap again for those of you who are slacking. I'm just kidding. Those of you who haven't heard it yet. If the microbiome is messy, your gut is messy, open up a little bit. And that causes the body to respond by sending out these soldiers called cytokines. Cytokines, we're not going to get technical, just means inflammation. So if the microbiome is messed up, causes inflammation, that inflammation goes to the brain. Neuroinflammation, it starts at the gut. So you can actually create inflammation in your brain, which can lead to all kinds of diseases, anxiety and Alzheimer's, and because your gut is off. So the very first part is the microbiome affecting the brain is inflammation. We have to make sure that our gut is not inflamed. The microbiome also plays a role on our adrenals. And I did a live on adrenal fatigue, cortisol levels. Recap again, it's supposed to be high in the morning, go down low throughout the day. And that's kind of a nice normal pattern. But when we're stressed, our cortisol levels are erratic. That conversation is from your gut, is from your microbiome. So your microbiome can actually make you produce more cortisol. Or if you're calmer, can make you produce less cortisol. They did an experiment on mice. I feel like every week I'm apologizing to mice and then I'm apologizing to my wife. I'm sorry, I didn't do the experiments, but I have to tell you what they discovered. So they had a group of mice that were germ-free. So their microbiome was empty. And then they had a group of mice that had a microbiome and they were anxious mice. And then, and so what they did is they took the microbiomes, the bacteria from the anxious mice and put it into these germ-free mice. And guess what? They developed anxiety just from the microbiome being changed. And then they tested it with a group of mice who had a microbiome but weren't anxious. And they put that microbiome into germ-free mice and they didn't develop anxiety. So anxiety is literally part of the bacteria in your belly. And if you're not convinced, this next point should blow your mind because it blew my mind. And if it doesn't blow your mind, then I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But here's the thing, you know, you kind of sort of know that depression and anxiety has kind of sort of something to do with something called serotonin and dopamine. You don't have to know a lot about them, but you've heard about them, right? You watch Dr. House, you watch Grey's Anatomy. Serotonin and dopamine has to do with depression and anxiety. Guess what? The bacteria in your belly produce serotonin and dopamine. They produce what's called neurotransmitters. The things that are in charge of anxiety and depression, the bacteria that live in your belly, they make them. They make dopamine, which is in charge of motivation. They make all of that. 95% of the body's serotonin is made in the gut. So when you're taking a medication for depression and anxiety, that is actually um, something to do with serotonin. And instead, we could talk about how 
to improve our gut microbiome so that it produces its own serotonin levels. So it's not low. Low serotonin levels is depression. So we're talking about fixing the microbiome to help with that depression and anxiety because it actually produces it. Right now, I'm not telling you not to take medications, please. If you're on it, stay on it. If you're considering it, by all means, start it. This is not an anti-pill conversation. It never is. I'm just saying there's more to it than just medication. And if the bacteria in your belly are in charge of producing the things that are in charge of depression, anxiety, serotonin, dopamine, tryptophan, along with other neurotransmitters, then we have to make sure to take care of these little guys in our stomach because they're taking care of our mood and our anxiety and our depression. So there's an entire world living in your belly that produces chemicals and hormones that directly talk to your brain and affect your mood. And if that doesn't blow your mind, I, I don't know what can. So let's just, mid, let me put that together. The gut brain access is real and it's intense. First of all, it's connected physically by the vagus nerve and there's a constant bi-directional communication from your gut to your brain, from your brain to your gut. And if you're ever not sure, just take a deep breath and watch what happens. That's the connection. Taking a deep breath down here affects your brain. And the other connection is these microbiomes producing the chemicals, the neurotransmitters, and the hormones that directly affect your brain. So we have to keep those little buggers happy. So if you're out there, you know, eating McDonald's and drinking soda, you are not taking care of those bacteria inside your belly. You're getting them agitated. So we have to take care of them. So depression and anxiety has long been considered to be just genetic or environmental. And those are also part of it, of course. You know, how you're raised, what you're exposed to, what's happening in your life. Of course, that's part of the anxiety and depression picture. But it's not the whole picture. The other part of it is what's happening inside your belly. And until we manage that, we're not going to get to the bottom of your anxiety, your depression, or your mood swings. So the important thing here is that an imbalance in your gut microbiome can actually disrupt how your brain is working. They actually did 10 clinical trials on patients with depression. And the only thing that they introduced was probiotics. And they saw significant improvement. I am not saying that probiotics cures a depression. I am just saying that studies have been done with just probiotics as intervention. And they notice improvement. Imagine what it would be like if probiotics and a good diet, and therapy, and medication if you need it, right? Instead of just having part of the picture, have the whole picture. So the trial that I'm talking about, the probiotics, is just to let you know how effective introducing good bacteria is in clinical trials for depression. And I see this all the time when I work with my patients. When patients come in, we have them do a questionnaire. And one of the questions is, are you depressed? Are you anxious? How are your mood swings? And we have them quantify from zero to four. Four is I'm very depressed, very anxious. I have a lot of mood swings and zero is great. And within two months, without medication, without medical intervention, just gut intervention, it gets better. I see it time and time again. So we have the trials. We have this, what I see in my patients. It just happens. And now we have to talk about, okay, e, you convinced me once again, that the microbiome is important. You tell me every week it's important for something. And today it's important. And I really like my brain, so what can I do to fix it? So, of course, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about diet, but I'm going to give you specific examples of what you need specifically for your microbiome to be happy so mental health can improve. The very first thing is vegetables. I need you to have some vegetables, the, the leafy green vegetables, okay, not potatoes. I'm not telling you not to eat potatoes, but I'm just saying potatoes and corn is not where I want you to go. I want you to have the green leafy vegetables because they're loaded with fibers and fibers feed the good bacteria. And if you're eating, if you're someone who eats a lot of green leafy vegetables, green leafy vegetables, say that really fast, green leafy vegetables. That was hard for me. If you're someone who eats a lot of green leafy vegetables, you are less likely to have bad bacteria and more likely to have good bacteria. So that's leeks, onions, asparagus, broccoli, spinach, artichokes. Next, I you know you're going to hate me but you have to cut out the sugar. I'm sorry, you have to cut it out. Why? Because especially the monosaccharides, simple sugars, simple, super sweet sugars like candy, you have to eliminate those because here's what happens. You eat them, but it gets digested so fast that the bacteria in your microbiome actually don't get any. 
So besides the fact that sugar, and I talked about it in my other lives, insulin resistance, inflammation, and all that jazz, for your microbiomes, they actually don't get fed by sugar because it gets processed too fast. So you run the risk of actually starving those bacteria and they're hungry. So they're gonna start eating your intestinal wall. Now that's quite a picture, which of course causes inflammation. So the, the sugar, along with all the other things I've told you about sugar, it actually starves your microbiome and creates inflammation. So we have to remove that. So if you really want something sweet, you should have more complex sugars like dark chocolate, coconut flour, apples, berries, bananas, mango, and sweet potatoes. They take longer to process so your microbiome actually gets some of it. And of course, always keep an eye out for those hidden sugar sources. Monosaccharides is the fancy word for it because they could be in ketchup. They could be in peanut butter. It could be in crackers. It could be in yogurt. So take a look at those and try to avoid it. Probiotics. Take a probiotic. Just take a probiotic. Like, what do you have to lose? Just take a probiotic. But find a good one. Make sure it has live cultures in there. Find a quality one. Uh, and if you're not sure, of course, we sell them here. But you don't have to come to us. Go anywhere and get it. And if we're talking about probiotics, we have to let you know that I need you to avoid antibiotics. You need to avoid antibiotics because they're harming your microbiome. Antibiotics don't know which bacteria to kill. So it goes in, it takes the good and the bad and gets it done. So it is pretty harmful for the microbiome. So if you need it, of course, if you truly need it, take it. And as soon as you're done with your course of antibiotics, go ahead and start your probiotics. But here's the thing. If you don't need it, don't go to your doctor, your NP and your PA and say things like, I have a cold for five minutes and I really just want to nip it in the bud. That's my, that's such a classic statement. I really just want to nip it in the bud. Can you give me antibiotics? No, no, I can't give you antibiotics for a five minute cold, 12 hours of a cold, one day of a cold because you want to nip it in the bud because guess what? Colds don't work that way. And so I want you not to ask for it because you don't need it. So if your doctor or your PA or your NP says, don't take the antibiotic, listen to them because it's safer for your microbiome. You don't need it. It's going to harm you more than it's going to help you. Let me not go into that. Sorry, I get emotional about antibiotics. It happens. Who doesn't, right? Anyway, no antibiotics unless you really need it. And if you need it, probiotics after. Stock up on something called prebiotics. Prebiotics are foods that feed the probiotics. Because remember, probiotics are alive. They're bacteria. They're living inside of you. It's kind of gross, but it's happening anyway, whether you like it or not. You got to feed them. So you need prebiotics. Apples, artichokes, berries, garlic, green vegetables, leeks. Feed the probiotics. Make them happy, and you'll be happy. And then there's a whole world of fermented foods. These fermented foods are foods that have bacteria in it, have probiotics in them. We usually think of yogurt, but I'm not a huge fan of dairy. So consider kombucha, kimchi, pickles. There's other fermented food out there that's not yogurt that just has the probiotics right in there. So, you, you know, we can get it in, in through your food. And I would be remiss if I didn't let you know that sleep affects your microbiome. And if you didn't watch my live on sleep yet, please do. It's in here in the playlist somewhere. So make sure you watch that. You need to sleep. You need at least seven, at least seven to eight hours of sleep because if not, guess what? It disrupts your microbiome and we already know the microbiome's not happy. You're not going to get the serotonin and dopamine you need. So make your microbiome happy. And you do need to work out because studies show that people who exercise have healthier microbiomes than people who don't. And that's it. And our goal right now is to get a healthy microbiome. And then lastly, you need to make time for yourself. I know it sounds so like cliche, but you just need to do it because you need to heal your gut and your gut and your microbiome doesn't like stress. Who does? So if you're not doing it for yourself, consider doing it for the bacteria that live inside of you rent free. So meditation, mindfulness, yoga, remember that just taking a deep breath is a huge gut brain connection, that deep breath through the vagus nerve, establishing a balance, super important for your gut microbiome. So I hope now you can see good health important for your mental health. It's just completely connected. And to consider treating this without treating this is really not seeing the whole picture. You need to treat this together while you're treating this. And I'm not saying instead of, I'm saying together with as part of your therapy, as 
part of your treatment, as part of your plan to get better, you need to treat your gut if you want to treat your depression, your anxiety, your mood issues. And I know that this is a lot because I'm talking about taking care of your gut and the food you need to eat and how much you need to sleep and that you need to exercise. And as always, we're here for you. Find us at the new method or the new method.com. It's a great way to send us a, a personal message. Let us know you want to work with us because we want you to become the game changer in your life. We want you to take control and get to your health goals because you always knew there was a better way. And I will see you next week.